Well, that slide before was me saying hello, Germany, and uh, thank you to my pregnant wife for letting me sneak off to do this. So I got into the space building games, and uh, I realized pretty quickly that uh, it's really hard to bring people into the space. Onboarding is bad. People have to go through some pretty horrible UX just to be able to uh, experience ADAPT, uh, which kind of led to Uh, meta transactions and uh, signed messages. Uh, Alex Van de Zandt did this really cool talk at some UX summit in Toronto that just, every time I watch it I get goosebumps because he talks about how you can use signed messages and you don't have to have ETH in the account and that set me off on a whole new journey of how to, uh, cool, how to uh, kind of interact with smart contracts, change state, Is it, uh, did I break it? Do you, you, basically, signed messages allow you to uh, interact with smart contracts, change state, without having uh, to have ETH in the contract. It's all good. Um, uh, while we're talking about meta transactions, uh, it's kind of, so I'll, I'm gonna diverge back to burner wallets. I won't talk about meta transactions anymore, but I should kind of hint at where those are going, uh, Yoav's in the crowd. So the GSN is kind of, we, the problem with a, a meta transaction relayer, it was centralized. You would, you would have this central thing paying the gas and people would submit signed messages to it and it would execute those for you. And that was centralized and that's bad, right? And so the GSN had figured out a way to kind of decentralize that and uh, now, they're, now they're working on this kind of cool proxy contract stuff where you can pay with tokens to have your transactions submitted by someone else and it's all still decentralized, that's the key. And uh, you know, thanks to the Open Zeppelin guys for helping them get audited and, and, uh, the, and just kind of driving adoption. So, oh, and one cool thing about, last thing about meta transactions is the multi-collateral DAI will respect signed messages. So if you're redeploying any of your contracts, make sure those respect signed messages so people can just sign stuff with their key pair and they don't have to have ETH and all of that, they can just submit it to your contract. Okay, I think that's my end about meta transactions. Maybe I need to point this somewhere else. It's the little right button, right? Aha, okay. So, uh, back to burner wallets. So, we wanted to have this event where people would actually use crypto to buy beer. And it was uh, pretty bad. Bad, uh, bad user experience, bad, bad everything. People, people, basically they had to come in and they had to like buy Bitcoin from us and then go up to the bar and wait for blocks to get mined. And at the same time I had been talking with Alejandro from the Open Money Initiative about this idea for this wallet and he went for like the Android side and I went for like a web wallet, but basically it was, it was the result of some soul searching about how do we really need decentralization? Like this really cool technology that I love that gives me goosebumps all the time, is it, is it really that like useful? And, and at some point there was this kind of triangle in my head of what we need is decentralization in places like Venezuela where it's actually necessary. And then what we need to do is have this like great UX at the same time. And, and then uh, it all kind of came together. I don't, I don't even remember what the, the third point of the triangle was. Mass adoption, that's what it is. So to get mass adoption, you need to go where decentralization is necessary and, and uh, you need to have the UX be just spot on smooth. So, this all collided at this cypherpunk, cypherpunk speakeasy that we had. So what it was, was it, it, was, a, it was in Boulder, Colorado, there were two rooms, and in the first room it was present day. And you could purchase crypto, and then in the second room it was 40 years in the future, and the government was uh, hyperinflating the money, and we tried to like set up a scenario where you could still buy beer from the bar, but it was like $2 million for a beer. 
So that like made the cognitive disconnect of like, why am I walking in with cash and then going through this awful UX at the bar? And that's what kind of like set off the whole using burner wallets idea. And that's, where, that's what led us to ETH Denver. And we did kind of that same UX. Basically, you showed up, you had a QR code, you read that QR code, you got a wallet, you walked up to the food truck, you scanned a QR code there, and you, you bought your food. It was like 4,000 meals purchased. There, were, there was a lot of usage there. And so uh, that's what leads me to like a demo, but it's, man, the internet's bad. Anybody have like decent internet on their phone? No one? A lot of no, a lot of no's. Anybody, anybody, data? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we go. We, let's let's get some burner wallets going. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll open up xdai.io, xdai.io and if you have an iPhone, go ahead and take that. That's your private key now. Keep it yeah. secret. Keep it safe. If you have an iPhone, you can just point the camera at it. Anybody else? Here we go. Here we go. Boop, boop, boop. I think that's probably all the the money I'm handing out right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what you'll do is you'll scan those and you'll get a wallet. And that wallet will have some XDAI on it by POA. And it's going to make some security trade-offs. And we have to kind of talk about maximalism a little bit and how... <sighs> you went down the rabbit hole. Like, we, we all had the rabbit hole moment, everyone in this room. But to get there, you probably had to go through a lot of complicated steps. And I think that we need to give people the magic moment almost up front. Even if it's a little staged and a little less decentralized, give them the magic moment of what it's like to use crypto and then kind of start working them up the, the spectrum of decentralization. Te teach them, okay, so you've got a private key in local storage right now, but probably could be better if we move that up uh, into an app and maybe behind a, a, a seed phrase and all the other security practices that uh, we know and love. I don't have any internet. You guys, anybody? Anybody get a wallet? <laughs> so imagine, let me paint you a picture. Imagine wallets with uh, quick, quick, easy transactions. And uh, <laughs> you can basically, I, I say, I hit receive, you hit send, I shoot your QR code, you send the money, it takes five seconds, everyone gets goosebumps and says, ooh, that was fun. And it's, it's about those magic moments, and that's what we need to be giving people if we want to drive uh, adoption. It's gotta be really smooth UX and, and just like magic moments. No, nobody, huh? No one has enough internet. Oh, 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 he's doing it, he's doing it. Oh, it's not scanning? That's even worse. It, okay, so, okay. There, yours is, that's a wallet. Did it have money on it? One die, all right, hooray, everybody. Okay. <laughs> One for five, all right. Uh, so, basically, here, let me, oh wait, mine's loading. I was thinking you could send me money and we could do a demo of it sending, but I've got a loading screen. Anybody get xdai.io to come up? That's weird. I wonder if maybe that card's... Okay. You got the dollar. Okay. So, not a lot of magic moments happening here, but uh, that's kind of the point. So, uh, the, the burner wallet, the purpose is we trade off a little security, we trade off a little decentralization, we get it into people's hands, we make it really usable, we make it really cool, and then we kind of talk about the security on the back end and say, okay, it's, this is okay for $10, right? This is like loose cash. It's it, like analogous to cash. It's quick and easy to spend. You don't carry thousands of dollars around in your pocket. You shouldn't have thousands of dollars in a burner wallet, but it allows you to use that private key in a quick and easy way and then kind of move you out. So there's quite a few decentralized efforts going on. There we go. Uh, the first one is the burner factory. I think David Myhall's here. Uh, he, he basically has taken the idea of the burner wallet and set it up at burnerfactory.com where you can just say, 
I want a burner wallet, I want this token in it, I want these, this functionality, I want to even deploy a token, and then you, you basically get, I don't think it's burnerwallet.com, I think I have the wrong, it's probably burnerfactory.com, isn't it, yeah. Then you get basically mywallet.burnerfactory.com and you can have kind of like the ETH Denver experience in a box. Then he and I have some different ideas about how paper wallets should look, but we're working on it. Basically, you can get in, drag and drop a graphic and print a bunch of paper wallets. Uh, the dudes at, the FlexDApps dudes, I bet they're not here, at the Web3 Summit had uh, DAO versus DAO chess in a burner wallet. They allowed you, to, I think they even played, like the tickets were paid for on the burner wallet. I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, what else? Ooh, the LeapDAO guys. So they took, you can see that looks just like the burner. They took the burner wallet and they extended it to uh, the, the Leap network. And they put, they have all these cool games. There's this like CO2 based game where it's like, a tragedy of the commons game, and then a pri pri prisoner's dilemma game. But basically, the thing here is that burners are sort of becoming not capital B burner wallet, proper noun, more, more like lowercase b burner wallet. It's more of an idea. It's more of a, like an onboarding method. It's more like scaffolding, right? So, uh, oh yeah, they're also doing this. So this is, I have to like almost read this because it was, they're, they're, they have this governance thing. It's, so it's going to be in the hands of official party members of a pan-European party as a prototype for the first, for the German Congress. So like some, some government dudes are starting to play around with it, and that's fun. That's what we need to do. We need to get it in their hands, and it, we need to give them even a magic moment. Uh, we'll be at the Wyoming Hackathon. Uh, We'll be playing some proof of stake, uh, the DAOG, which I'll get to in a little bit. Uh, privacy is also another big thing. We're seeing a lot, it's kind of, it makes sense to go along with the ethos of a burner wallet to have some privacy in there. So there's some really fun mixers and some ZK technology coming into play where you can get money into that quick ephemeral wallet that isn't directly connected to another account. And uh, the burner provider. So the burner provider is an NPM package that I put together that's a really, really simple Web3 provider that just writes the private key to local storage. So you can, in your app, you could quickly set up a burner by just bringing in the burner provider inside your Web3 object and then point it at Infura or whatever your RPC endpoint is. So, so what we're finding though is like, okay, yeah, sure, you can buy hot dogs at a food truck. We can spend money back and forth. But like the LeapDAO and the, and the FlexDAPS guys, it's, it's like this scaffolding for onboarding. And once people have scanned in that card and they have a wallet, we can do a lot more than just send money around. We can start changing state and playing games. So that's when uh, I put out emojicoin.exchange to sort of play around with this idea. And it's, a, it's like a shit coin trading game where each of those emojis are a different coin. I was asked to speak at a local college. I walked in, did my whole talk about UX and the triangle that I couldn't remember earlier. And, uh, <laughs> and then I handed out paper wallets. And they had great internet there. And all of them scanned in, and they all had this wallet right here. And they were able to just click. Like, there was no, there was no MetaMask. There was no seed phrase. There was no download. There was no smart contracts. But there were actually, every time they clicked buy, they were actually buying these things from the smart contracts. So you could buy and sell these emojis, and they would fluctuate in value. Obviously, you could just like run arbitrage against it and drain the contract. This wasn't like supposed to be economically sound. It was supposed to test onboarding and usability. But those 40, so out of the 50 kids that were in the classroom that I tossed those wallets to, 40 of them uh, immediately jumped on and, maybe I need to be closer. Jumped on, oh, that's a smart contract. Jumped on, I think I have a graph, there we go. Jumped on and started using it and it was just like, for the next 24 hours, they racked up like 20,000 transactions. So there was a ton of usage. They didn't even really, I mean, I told them they were talking to a smart contract because it was cool, but they, they didn't really need to know they were even talking to a smart contract. They didn't need to download anything. They just hit a paper wallet, had the game, and played it. And so now it's like, okay, we've got the scaffolding for onboarding, we can bring people in. So then at Ethereal, we were like, okay, we'll let them have rad coins and they will be able to buy food at the food trucks, which we also learned a lesson about 
the food trucks have to be incentivized to go through this bad UX also, or it's not going to be valuable to them, and they'll just give people the food and not make them scan in. So if you have a burner event, make sure that your food trucks are incentivized. Uh, but in the wallet, they could also, they had XP+. Plus. So uh, the Helena guys put a prediction market into the burner wallet, and while you were waiting in line for your taco, you could buy a position in, in a prediction market. Let me see if I actually have a slide for that. Yep, there it is. Oh, spoiler alert if you haven't watched Game of Thrones. But basically, while you were waiting in line, you could, I mean, just like with one click, no, no downloads, no seed phrases. I keep saying that. But basically, you just, you had the burner wallet, you were ready to go, but you could buy a position, yes or no, on a prediction market. And my guess is that was the first time a lot of people had used a prediction market. So it's like getting this in their hands and letting them experience and letting them understand what a prediction market is and letting them have the magic moment of guessing correctly and getting to kind of have skin in the game. Uh, wire integration, I don't know why that slide's there, but we just deployed the wire integration so you can buy with a uh, debit card, you can like just buy into a burner wallet. Oh, and that leads to kind of why why talking at DAPCON and why Gnosis? So uh, on top of having the games, I deployed a different, like a slightly modified version of the Gnosis safe to XDAI to give users the experience of, basically it's like a one of N multi-sig, but there's so much we can do with it now that we have it here. But basically you, man, if we had internet, I could do this sweet demo where, so, so if you go to your burner wallet, the, the, guy with the guy with the dollar, if you go to your burner wallet, there's a new button called apps. And if you click apps, you're gonna see emojicoin.exchange and the DAOG and you'll see Helena, but you'll also see a Gnosis safe and you hit install. And five seconds later, you have a Gnosis safe in your burner wallet ready to go. And then you can deposit and withdraw into that and it's, you click deposit, you type in $5, you click go, five seconds later, there's $5 in that Gnosis safe. But it's about permanence, right? So then you can click the add owner button, and then you can scan some other dude's receive code, and then they're added in five seconds, but then I have this uh, beacon contract that's firing an event with them indexed on it. So if you scan my wallet and you add me as an owner, the, the safe just pops up over on my phone. So I don't even have to like do anything. I just show you a code and then now I have access to that safe also. So when your phone goes in the toilet, I can re receive those funds, right? So it's sort of like you're out, you're out partying some night, you split a lift home, they just send you some money on a burner wallet or through a link and a text message. Then you can set up a safe, you can put those funds in it, and then you can shoot your MetaMask account and add that as a signer. So then you kind of have this permanence, but you don't really have to do a lot of like sending around. What is next? Oh, sponsored by Gecko. Uh, so uh, yeah, so if you have this platform where you can hand out tokens, what else can you do? Well, I just happen to have some artwork here. So I have some uh, oil paintings of mine that are tokenized. And when you, oh no, when you get outside to the outside world, you can scan these. There's a QR code on the back and you'll have the, co you'll have the coin like right in your wallet. So it's set up so if you scan this, it's just gonna show you like this painted coin and you can send that around. So it's like a quick, easy way to like have collectibles. Okay, so I, I'm not gonna be able to handle these out. I'll split it up and go. So, so then you, you can have these like, and, I, and there's a video of me on YouTube talking about it, really loud and bow-tied. But uh, basically, when, when we were at the Rare F Festival, there was a lot of people talking about moving NFTs around, but as soon, and then like all of a sudden, some guy's got his laptop up and we have to look at Etherscan and everything kind of breaks down at that point, right? You need to be able to, and this, this happened, it was cool. It was Matt Condon and Simon DLR, like some, some NFT OGs. Uh, like they both scanned theirs and then they had the token and then, then they sent it to each other. Like they were sending it back and forth and my heart was beating. It was awesome. So you can, do, you can do NFTs in the wallet, you can have it, give, give that magic moment in terms of token stuff. I had to turn my slides in early. 
So I just put in a lot of emojis and I figured I would fill it in as I went along. I wonder what thinking guy means. I think thinking guy means speaking of art, I have these ideas for these two different types of games. One of them is this like mass adoption game where anybody can get in and do something. I think the, the segue is that like the, the best way I can describe it is like you do something very subjective on the bottom floor and then you uh, basically get upgraded by doing something good to the second level. And so I imagined it would be something like, say you paint a picture and you basically sign it, but you don't have any ETH, you don't have MetaMask, you don't have any of that stuff, we just generate you a key pair. And then you kind of ship that off to the second layer and the second layer decides if they like it or not. Like they basically say, this is a great painting, I wanna hang this in my, in my virtual wall, so I'll, I'll sign this transaction and I'll put it on chain and I'll give you some tokens as a thank you and then maybe, maybe a whole bunch of people like token vote because he put it up on his wall, right? So maybe like layer two is I hang it up on my wall and layer three is people like putting tokens toward that thing. So all of a sudden this person who had nothing to do with anything, didn't know anything about Ethereum or anything, just got in and did something very subjective, say painted this picture. Now they've, they've been sort of like, like projected into our ecosystem. They've, they've got tokens and, and they've experienced decentralization and they know like now they have this thing that they want to protect so they're incentivized to learn more about MetaMask and, and seed phrases. But that's not this idea. The two game ideas. One game idea is mass adoption. The other game idea is like fantasy football for crypto nerds. So I want to build this game that's very open-ended that lets us play with DAOs, lets us play with economic situations, lets us play with uh, like kind of game building almost, right? So this is the DAO. This is what I've been working on right now. It's a decentralized autonomous organization game, kind of like what the, what the FlexDAPs dudes were doing with DAO versus DAO chess, where they had the plutocracy versus the democracy. This lets us play around with, so there's a Moloch DAO, and you start with a certain set of rules. I think in this one we started with like tents and we said that the tent would generate the smiley face and the smiley face represents population. So it's kind of like this, you know, I wouldn't say Sim City, some, some kind of like resource management type game, right? Kind of looks like Settlers. We could, we could, we could work that in. But, but basically we started out with tents and smiley faces represented population and you would basically you would spend one population to build a tent, but then that tent would generate like three population back every block that was mined, or every three blocks or six blocks that was mined. So, so then you're kind of generating population and you use your population to submit a proposal to the Moloch DAO. And so then all the players are try, trying to like race towards some victory condition, which in this case was earning 100 population. But on the way to 100 population, they voted in all these new rules, like, okay, let's say, let's, let's deploy another emoji, which is a smart contract, uh, that's a house, that the rules in the smart contract are, it can be built on top of a tent, and it will generate twice as much population as the tent. So then you're doing all this kind of like resource management stuff where you're, you're like politicking with people, and you've got your goats making cheese for some reason, and, and then you're trying to build up, but the first person to get to that 100 population wins the pot, which in this case was $3 in shitcoin that I had minted. But eventually, you'll be able to buy into it, there'll be real skin in the game, we'll be using a DAO, we can use different DAOs, but in this case we're using a Moloch DAO, and, and the whole point is to kind of play around with DAOs and get participation. I, I just wanna see what it looks like when a lot of people have just a little skin in the game and they're using some of these cool things that we have. There's the Moloch, There's, so the, these are some proposals here. So like that second proposal is some dude was like, how about we have this buildable emoji that's a castle, and then there's bricks. So maybe you had to generate bricks. Oh, I bet, I bet it's mountains. So I bet you could discover mountains, they would generate bricks, and then you could use the bricks to build a castle. And I bet the castle generated even more population. So, so you can see how like the rules changing dynamically throughout the game kind of change a lot of the, uh, the economy leading toward trying to, to win that game. Here's a totally different game we were doing, space, where we had satellites generating aliens or something. <laughs> I'm not sure, there's cheese there. Oh, cheese from the moon, I remember that now. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So uh, we could, 
Uh, let me see what other, what other slides we got here. Oh yeah, Kirby. Then we'll come back to that. So Kirby is this thing I'm working on with the civil team. We're trying to figure out how to make not just user onboarding, but also developer onboarding smoother. We would like a Web2 developer to be able to just drop into the space and start kind of getting into it. Same thing with like the user getting the magic moment, we want developers to get that magic moment too. So with Kirby, we're thinking we'll have this one line JavaScript that comes in and it kind of brings in Web3, but in an iframe. So we'll be able to control the iframe. We'll be able to add cool things like meta transactions and, and, and uh, like the Web3 Connect from Pedro where it's, you've got a selection of different Web3. We'll be able to do signing, kind of like bottom up identity attestation stuff. Uh, all within the iframe and we can upgrade the iframe, but all the developer does is he brings in one line of JavaScript and just says, I want to like dot log in with Ethereum and, and we'll go on our side, sign a message with some burner account at first, but then eventually we will let them upgrade to say Portis and then they'll use their Portis to like sign the ephemeral back and forth. So there's like a, there's like a moment where we say, okay, they've signed off, that ephemeral account is now trash, they've upgraded to Portis, now if they come back, just use their Portis. We don't want the developer to have to worry about all that stuff, so we'll, we'll do it on our side and then just provide a nice in interface to the developer. Uh, Word, so I have 45 seconds and some DAOG wallets, so I'm gonna do some more handing out here. But basically these are um, private keys, and you'll notice the accounts, this is, this is the coolest part, are DA06, so like all the accounts, you can see them when they're making interactions on chain, it says like DAOG. So here's, here's some DAOG wallets, and I'll deploy a game real quick. If you guys wanna just pass those around. So I will deploy a game where there's just four rules. We won't even use the, the Moloch, we'll just mess around. And, oh, my time stopped. I have infinity now. And uh, basically there'll be four rules. There'll be a tent that will generate population. You'll use the population in the Moloch or, or for discovery, for, for looking around. And then if you happen to find a poop emoji, it will generate mushrooms. And the first person to like 10 mushrooms will win. And uh, I don't have any internet. But I'm at Austin Griffith on Twitter and Telegram. Uh, I think here or at ETH Denver, I think, not ETH Denver, ETH Berlin, we're going to play the DAOG like on a bigger scale. I think the most people we've ever had was at State of Scale, we had like 17 people playing. I wanna get that like way up. Let's get like 50 players in. So I'll give everybody some tokens. I got a bunch more of those wallets. We'll have a big central screen and we'll kind of play this game and we'll play it in a way where like we're using the DAO a lot and we're voting in all sorts of weird stuff and kind of competing to, to win that thing. But uh, that's it, uh, thank you, I'm Austin Griffith.